We're on the phone today with former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Ambassador Bolton, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Well, glad to be with you. Thank you for having me. We're very glad to have you here today to talk about the U.N. Arms Control Treaty that uh, has been approved by the United Nations. I understand that uh, President Obama has not signed that yet, but can you explain what the impact of that treaty would be on the, on the U.S. Constitution and particularly on the Second Amendment? Well, basically, the treaty's sponsors say that it has to do with international trade in small arms and light weapons, but in fact, uh, it contains language that uh, if the U.S. were to ratify the treaty, its advocates could say later required the United States to enact sweeping gun control legislation. And, you know, this has been the hidden agenda of the advocates of this treaty for 15 years now. They were basically stopped during the Bush administration, uh, but Obama in his first term tried to move the treaty forward and now safely reelected. Uh, I think it's clear from what he has said and Secretary of State Kerry, they intend to sign the treaty and try to have it ratified. So it, it really is something I think that uh, after the failure of very uh, restrictive gun control legislation in Congress and in many state legislatures over the past several years, this is the sort of back doorway that gun control advocates have found to impose gun control on the United States, all the while saying, oh, no, no, this just applies to international transfers, but knowing that there's language in the treaty that once it becomes uh, ratified, they would then turn around and say, to comply with the treaty, you have to adopt further gun control laws. So that's what's at issue. Okay. On June the 3rd, 67 of the countries actually signed this treaty, but the United States has not yet. Is there any kind of a deadline by which the Obama administration has to sign the treaty? No, they can sign it at any point uh, before it comes into force or after it comes into force. That's really up to them. There's been a lot of speculation what's taking the administration so long. Uh, hard to answer that question. Of course, they, they don't consult with me, but it's possible <laughs> they just wanted to see what the initial reaction was in the United States. They don't want to make a big deal out of it. They want to sign the treaty in the dark of night and bring it before the Senate when they hope people will not pay it close attention. That, that's my guess anyway. Okay. Now, I understand that 57 senators have said that they will not vote to ratify the treaty or to confirm the ratification of the treaty. If the treaty is not presented to the Senate for, for a confirmation, does it have any impact on our law at that point, or can the president bypass this with some kind of executive order? Well, this is a, this is a real danger, uh, and, and it stems from two sources, really. Uh, the first off, there's an obscure international treaty, which, by the way, the United States isn't a party to, but it, it hasn't slowed down uh, administrations before. The, the treaty basically says if you've signed another treaty but haven't yet ratified it, you cannot act to defeat the object and purposes of the treaty. And you can argue about what sense that makes with parliamentary governments signing treaties. It makes no sense for a system like the United States where the president can sign a treaty, but it doesn't mean anything to us until the Senate ratifies it. Nonetheless, we saw the Clinton administration try to use that obscure treaty to justify, for example, uh, compliance with the prohibition on uh, underground nuclear test. And I think the Obama administration, having seen that lesson, will try and do the same. That's why the administration's signature actually could make a difference here. And under that theory, the president could say, well, in order not to defeat the object or purpose of the treaty while we're waiting for the Senate to ratify it, I'm going to issue Executive Order A and Executive Order B that, in effect, tries to implement the treaty. And that's where the uh, the way of avoiding Congress entirely really could arise. The president uh, has not been uh, uh, reluctant to use executive orders. Obviously, his regulatory agencies are, are running out of control. So I do think that uh, this is a real risk. Obviously, I think uh, opponents of this approach believe that if the president tries to do it, it should create a real firestorm of opposition because this, this would be, in effect, ignoring the constitutional process for legislation. Which we've seen in the past the president is not shy about doing exactly. with, with his uh, recess appointments when the Senate's not in recess and things like that. Now, the Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott has said that he will file a lawsuit against the federal government if this treaty is signed and, and ratified. 
Can the Supreme Court overturn a treaty like this? Sure. A treaty has to be consistent with the Constitution. You know, there's an idea out there uh, that, that, uh, that even some conservatives and Republicans have espoused that treaties are superior to the Constitution. That, that cannot be the case. For us, the highest authority, at least on this earth, is the Constitution. And treaties, like laws of the United States, cannot be inconsistent with the Constitution. So if by chance uh, the treaty is ratified, it would certainly be subject to constitutional challenge. Now, I understand also that the President can hold the treaty back from submitting it to the Senate to basically any point in time. So if he got a, a larger majority after the uh, 2014 midterm elections, or even a future President could take this treaty and, and submit it for ratification. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the president, of course, can withdraw his signature from a treaty. I mean, I, one of my proudest moments during the Bush administration was when we unsigned the treaty that created the International Criminal Court, which is a real, potentially a real threat to the United States. But there are a lot of other treaties out there that have been signed long, long ago, uh, like the Law of the Sea Treaty signed back during the Carter administration, which we've successfully blocked over the years, but which can be resubmitted at any time. And in John Kerry, you've got somebody who wants that treaty approved. He wants the arms trade treaty approved. Uh, so, so we're shaping up for battles ahead. But, but the point you make is very important. The, the, obviously, the, the balance of power in the Senate can change at any point. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's why the, the uh, 2014 election, among other reasons, is, is so important, because we don't want to let that happen. Now, I think that this is not only a threat to the Second Amendment, but to our entire Bill of Rights. If the President allows the sovereignty of the United States to be subordinated to the United Nations under the, attacking the Second Amendment, couldn't he do the same thing with the First Amendment, the Fourth, Fifth Amendment, or any other amendment? Well, I think we're vulnerable across the board. This is something I've written about and spoken about for a long time, I mean like 15 years now, that mm -hmm. for issues we normally consider domestic, I'm not talking about foreign policy and defense, national security issues here, but issues like gun control, family law, uh, the death penalty, uh, environmental issues, uh, the left in the United States, when it is not satisfied with the result of our democratic process, when it doesn't get what it wants on these and, and a whole range of other domestic issues, has increasingly been trying to internationalize the issue, to have these questions debated and decided in uh, bodies of the United Nations in international treaty negotiations because they know that they have a lot more congenial environment negotiating with the rest of the world than negotiating mm -hmm. with their fellow citizens. Uh, and this, this has the prospect of fundamentally uh, undermining our sovereignty. You know, sovereignty is not an abstraction to the United States. Uh, we, we know exactly what it means. The Constitution says in the first three words, we the people. We the people are sovereign in the United States, not the government. So when, when you hear... Uh, uh, people say, well, you know, we need to share sovereignty internationally. That means sharing the power that we, the people, have. I think it's a huge mistake. I think it's very dangerous. Certainly we see it uh, at risk here in things like the arms trade treaty, but the risk is much broader than just gun control, really. It is a, it potentially all the way across the board of the whole range of domestic issues. Well, Ambassador, I know you have a really tight schedule. I'd like to change horses real quick, if we can, and talk about the uh, incident that happened in Benghazi where the United States ambassador was killed. Where are we on that investigation, and is this really something that is that Hillary Clinton is more responsible for than perhaps even President Obama? Well, I'm, I'm very worried that we've just completely lost uh, any possibility of, uh, of really doing anything about Benghazi. You know, it's, uh, it's nine months now, and uh, none of the people who, who committed these murders have been apprehended. I, I think that's the wrong way to go about it in any event. This is not a criminal justice matter. This is an attack on the United States. It's an act of war by the terrorists, and yet we haven't retaliated against anybody. Uh, and uh, I think that's a terrible signal. You know, an ambassador is the president's personal representative in the country where he's serving. And I think the symbol that we've, uh, we're sending 
is that uh, you can kill the personal representative of the President of the United States and get away with it, and three other brave Americans as well. So this is a, the, a, a signal of weakness that we're sending. I think the terrorists and our other adversaries around the world can see it. Uh, they're calculating their policies accordingly. Uh, there are a whole range of questions about Benghazi, why the facility was there, why it wasn't adequately protected, what happened on the day of the attack, uh, and then after the attack, where the administration came up with this ridiculous argument that it wasn't really a terrorist attack, but a demonstration over this Mohammed video that had gotten a little bit out of control. Really, right across the board, before, during, and after the attack, we don't have answers yet from the administration. So uh, public opinion polls show the American people really want to know the answer. I think they're very disturbed by by this and by, by the assassination of, uh, of the diplomats. They, they, want, they want answers. Congress really needs to continue this investigation and indeed step it up, I think. Now, Secretary Clinton testified before Congress and, and said, what difference does it make whether it was a terrorist attack or a, uh, a protest gone awry? Don't you think that that's really making light of a, a very, very, very serious situation? I think it shows she still doesn't understand uh, how grave this uh, this kind of attack is! It's it's a it's a tragedy for the for the four people who are killed. Uh, it shows that official Americans remain at risk all around the world. It shows that private citizen Americans doing business, tourism, visiting their families around the world are vulnerable. Uh, and the impression it leaves with friends and adversaries alike is that the United States can't protect its own people. That you can attack representatives of the United States with impunity. And the weakness that that indicates, the decline of American power and influence around the world, uh, I think could have consequences we, we can't even begin to imagine. And all of this uh, because of the attitude of the president that, you know, the war on terror is over. He says al-Qaeda is on the road to defeat. He doesn't even believe in victory over the terrorists. He thinks it's kind of a condition that you have to get used to, declining American military capabilities, on and on and on, uh, that I think are, represent policies that are uh, gravely endangering our national security. And we need to have more discussion in our, in our national political debate about the weakness that the president is creating. One of the things that I've been amazed in this is the just the lack of sensitivity to the families of the Americans who were lost in, in this incident and in the Fast and Furious with Border Patrol agent Brian Terry who was killed and his family's not getting any answers. What can we do with an administration that just ignores the responsibility of taking care of its representatives across the country and across the world? Well, the president's a very detached man. It's, it's almost like he thinks his government uh, consists only of what's on the four corners of his desk. I, I frankly have never seen anything like it in any prior president, Democrat or Republican. Uh, and I think uh, the, what, what we have to do as citizens is keep up the pressure. We do not accept that the United States uh, won't protect its people, that they won't go after uh, people who, who carry out operations like Fast and Furious and, and who allow... Uh, people who are part of the protective services that protect the American people or represent the American people, we're not going to uh, allow them to be killed with impunity. And I think we need to transmit the, how strongly we feel about this to our representatives in Congress, and we just have to keep at it day after day. Well, Ambassador, thank you very much for your time on this. I hope we can get back to you again in the future when uh, this treaty, if it moves forward and when it moves forward. I'd like to get your feedback on that at that point in time. Well, I'd, I'd be pleased to do that. I plan to keep my eye on it and look forward to talking to you in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.